If you've seen any of my other videos, you already know that real ear measurement is a critical procedure to ensure that your hearing aids are programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription. But not everybody can tolerate their full prescription of amplification at their initial fitting appointment. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what to expect if you can't tolerate the full level of sound at your initial hearing aid fitting. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. I often preach the importance of performing real ear measurement when programming a set of hearing aids. Now, if you're unaware of what real ear measurement is, I highly recommend that you check out my real ear measurement video that I will go ahead and link in the description. And when you're done watching that video, come right back to this one. Now, real ear measurement is great, but one of the biggest objections of hearing care providers is that real ear measurement can make the amplification of a hearing aid too loud for a hearing aid wearer, which causes them to completely skip the procedure and just use the initial fitting settings of the hearing aid programming software. The reality is, if you've been living the past several years of your life in a state of auditory deprivation due to an untreated hearing loss, there is a solid chance that you will not be able to achieve your full prescription of amplification at your initial hearing aid fitting. Just like the time needed for your eyes to adapt to light after you've been in a dark room for a long period of time, your brain needs time in order to adapt to the amount of sound that you're getting if you've been in a state of auditory deprivation. The big difference is your eyes can adjust to light very quickly compared to the brain having to adjust for the lack of auditory input that it's receiving from the ears. But this is never a good excuse to not perform real ear measurement at your initial hearing aid fitting, even if you can't tolerate the full prescription of amplification right off the bat. In my clinic, over 95% of individuals are not capable of tolerating their full level of amplification at their initial hearing aid fitting. Some individuals can tolerate more amplification than others, and I'm gonna use a bell curve to illustrate what I mean. If each person I treat in my clinic was represented on this bell curve, the small group of outliers to the far right would represent individuals who can tolerate their full level of amplification as verified by real ear measurement. These individuals are usually ones who have worn hearing aids before and they have been in limited or no auditory deprivation over the past several years. The second group from the right are individuals who I only have to reduce their overall volume by a step or two, which equates to about one or two decibels. This group is a little larger than the group on the far right, but still pretty small. As we work our way to the next group, these are individuals where I need to reduce their volume by three to four steps below their full prescription at their initial fitting. The middle two sections is where the majority of patients find themselves, which is five to six steps below their full prescription. As we keep moving to the left, we would need to reduce overall volume by even more steps until the point where we get to the extreme outliers on the far left side, which are individuals who are significantly below their prescriptive amplification targets as verified by real ear measurement. Now it's important to note that the vast majority of these individuals do not stay in the same category that they were when they first got fit with hearing aids. Over the course of 30 to 45 days, we end up increasing the amount of amplification that these individuals receive as their brain can tolerate more sound. Let's jump back to the bell curve to illustrate this a little bit better. Individuals who have been reduced in overall amplification at their initial fitting appointment end up working their way towards the right side of this bell curve by gradually increasing their overall amplification as they adapt to more sound. So someone who is in the second category would typically shift up to the first category after about a week or so. And the groups to the left of them would also move over to the right during that same period of time. Eventually, with enough time and subsequent visits to increase amplification towards a patient's prescriptive targets, we would start to see the distribution of patients shift towards the right where most individuals are actually meeting their full prescription of amplification. Now, there will always be individuals who cannot tolerate the amount of amplification at their full prescriptive targets. But again, this is not a good excuse to not perform real ear measurement. Now, there are different hearing loss prescriptions that will give different targets. But in general, when you have your hearing aids programmed up to your full level of amplification to these prescriptive targets, that is where you will hear your best. So even if you're one of these individuals who cannot tolerate your full prescription, getting as close to that prescription as humanly possible is always a good 
idea. Not only does this ensure that you're getting the most amount of audibility possible, it also ensures that you're getting the right blend of low, mid, and high frequencies for your specific type of hearing loss. Once you've reached the end of your fitting window and your brain has adapted as much as it possibly can to the amount of sound that your hearing aids are giving you, there is a good chance that you'll be able to achieve your full prescription of amplification. After you reach this point, your hearing care professional may make some small adjustments at different frequency ranges based on what your personal perceptions are. But it doesn't mean that we can completely eliminate real ear measurement from the equation. We have to know where the foundation is in order to make adjustments to help you hear better. So do not get discouraged if you cannot meet your full level of amplification at your initial hearing aid fitting. Like they say, all good things come with time. And if you're willing to put in the time, then there is a good chance that you'll be able to meet your full prescription so you can get the most amount of benefit out of your hearing aids. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you wanna see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.